So in today's video, we are going to focus on the power in an AC circuit. There are three kinds of power in an AC circuit. We have the active power, which is represented by the capital letter P and then measured in watts. We also have the reactive power, represented by the capital letter Q and then measured in volts amperes reactive. And then lastly, we have the apparent power, also represented by the capital letter S and then measured in volts amperes. So what do you think will be active power, reactive power and then apparent power? Active power is sometimes called the actual power, the true power, the real power and so on and so forth. And it's said to be the average power in watts delivered to a load and thus depends on the load resistance R. The reactive power is also said to be a measure of the energy changes between the source and the reactive part of the load and thus depends on the load reactance X. The apparent power on the other hand is said to be the combination of the active power and the real power. Now considering the power triangle, we have the active power along the horizontal axis, the reactive power along the vertical axis and the resultant to be the apparent power. And then we have phi to be the phase angle between the apparent power and the active power. Now this phi is also said to be the phase angle between the current and the voltage and also the phase angle between the impedance and the resistance that is considering the impedance triangle. So also considering the impedance triangle, we have the resistance along the horizontal axis, the reactance along the vertical axis, and the resultant is the impedance. And then phi is said to be the phase angle between Z and then R. Now considering the power triangle, the square of the apparent power is equal to the square of the active power plus the square of the reactive power. Now let's call this equation 1. Also the apparent power can be defined as the product of the RMS voltage and the RMS current without reference to the phase angle. Therefore, S is equal to VRMS times IRMS. Now let's call this equation 2. So from the power triangle, the active power is giving us the apparent power times cosine of the angle phi. So P equals S cos phi. And then from equation 2, we have S to be VRMS times IRMS. So that is VRMS times IRMS times cosine of the angle phi. We call this equation 3. And also for Q, that is equal to S times sine of the angle phi. And that is also equal to VRMS times IRMS times sine of the angle phi. We call this equation 4. And also the power factor is giving us cosine of the angle phi. So now let's focus on the power factor of a purely resistive circuit, a purely inductive circuit and a purely capacitive circuit. So for a purely resistive circuit, the current is said to be in phase with a voltage. And what this primarily means is that 
the phase angle between the current and the voltage is equal to zero. Now in that case, the power factor which is giving us cosine of the angle phi is equal to cosine of zero and that is equal to one. So such a circuit is said to have a unity power factor. Therefore, the power factor of a purely resistive circuit is unity. Also considering the case of a purely inductive circuit, the current is said to lag the voltage by 90 degrees. Now in that case, cosine of 90 is equal to zero. Therefore, the power factor of such a circuit is equal to zero. Also considering a purely capacitive circuit, the current also leaves the voltage by 90 degrees. Hence, the power factor of a purely capacitive circuit is also equal to zero. So what do you think will be the power factor of a circuit which contains a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor? So a circuit that contains a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor will have a power factor between zero and one. So the power factor of such a circuit will be between zero and one. And the power factor is said to be leading if the current leads the voltage and also lagging if the current lags the voltage in the circuit. Now, one other important thing you need to take notice of is that a resistor consumes active power, an inductor consumes reactive power, a capacitor consumes neither reactive power nor active power, but instead it supplies reactive power or reduces the consumption of reactive power. Now let's move on as we take a couple of examples. So for example one, an EMF whose instantaneous value at a time t is given by 283 sine 3140 plus pi on 4 volts is applied to an inductive circuit and the current in the circuit is 5.66 sine 3140 minus pi on 6 amperes. Determine A, the frequency of the EMF, B, the resistance and inductance of the circuit, and then C, the power absorbed. So let's try to solve this problem. So from the question, we are given the instantaneous voltage, that is V of T, to be equal to 283 sine 3140 plus pi on 4. And then we have the instantaneous current, I of T, also to be equal to 5.66 sine 3140 minus pi on 6 and then a we are asked to find the frequency of the emf so to find the frequency of the emf let's compare this equation to the general equation of a sinusoidal waveform so let the emf given in the question be v1 of t so that v2 of t will represent the general equation of a sinusoidal voltage so v2 of t is equal to vm sine omega t plus phi now comparing these two equations you realize that omega is equal to 314 therefore we have omega equals 2 pi f and that is equal to 314 so to find the value of the frequency the frequency is equal to 314 divided by 2 pi and that is equal to 49.97 hertz so we can approximate this value to 50 
so that we have f equals 50 hertz so this is the value of the frequency of the emf b we are asked to find the resistance and inductance of the circuit now to find the resistance and inductance of the circuit we first of all need to find the impedance of the circuit now according to ohm's law the impedance z is equal to the voltage divided by the current now we are giving the voltage and the current to be in the time domain form so let's convert that to the phasor domain so in doing so we are going to have 283 polar pi on 4 so that is 283 polar pi on 4 also for the current we have 5.66 polar negative pi on 6 now let's resolve this 283 divided by 5.66 gives 50 and then for the phase angle because we are dividing we are going to subtract so pi on 4 minus negative pi on 6 becomes pi on 4 plus pi on 6 now when you add the two you have 10 pi on 24 so we have 50 polar 10 pi on 24 now we are asked to find the resistance and inductance of the circuit and from the question we have been told that the circuit is an inductive circuit which means that the impedance is made up of the resistance and the inductive reactance so the resistance becomes r equals z cos phi now the phase angle is given as 10 over 24 pi now if you want to convert this value to degrees then you are going to multiply 10 over 24 by 180 and when you do that you are going to get 75 so that's going to be r equals z cos 75 and that is equal to 50 cos 75 and then you are going to have the resistance to be 12.94 ohms so this is the value of the resistance now let's find the inductive reactance so that we move on to find the inductance of the circuit so the inductive reactance that is given by xl is equal to z sine the phase angle that is 75 degrees so 50 sine 75 is equal to 48.30 so we have XL to be 48.30 ohms. Now XL is said to be equal to 2 pi FL. Now we are interested in the value of L. Therefore L is equal to XL divided by 2 pi F. Now we have XL to be 48. 3, 0, and then 2 pi f is equal to 314 therefore we are going to have the inductance to be equal to 0 0.1538 henrys now because this value is small we can convert this to milli henrys that is moving three decimal places to the right so that's going to be one two three so we have 153.8 milli henrys so l is equal to 153.8 milli henrys
Now to see, we are going to find the power absorbed. Now the power absorbed, that is P, is the real power or the true power and that is given by the RMS value of the voltage times the RMS value of the current times cosine of the phase angle. Now you know that the RMS value is equal to the amplitude divided by square root of 2. So VRMS is going to be 283 divided by root 2. Also for IRMS, that's going to be 5.66 divided by square root of 2 times cosine of angle phi, which is 75 degrees. So after multiplying these three, you are going to have the power to be 207.3 watts. So this is the power absorbed by the circuit.